We see up on the board right now some data for activity that we just completed. This is data that was actually collected by one group. Uh, we're going to end up uh, completing our analysis table, which is what you actually see up on the board right now. And then we're going to plot a graph of speed versus radius to determine what the relationship between the speed of the object moving in the circle and the radius of that object's path was. You can see that the data that we have collected here for radius is 0.1 all the way up to 0.6 meters, and that goes by uh, 10 centimeters each time. We have a time for 20 revolutions uh, and then a time for 20 revolutions again. We said that when we were going over this activity that we wanted to do that twice so that we could get some good numbers, average them out, okay, and then find the period from that, find the speed from that. A really easy way to do this, if you've typed out your data like I have on Microsoft Excel, is to do the following. Okay, we want to go to we want to go to this column, to this cell in particular. We want to find the average time of 6.6 .6 and 7.1. Now, you can punch that into your calculator, and it's probably just as quick as finding the average time for 20 revolutions for 6.6 .6 and 7.1. But the beauty of Excel is you only have to actually do it once, and then Excel will do the rest of them for you. So one trial is just as quick on your calculator, but six trials or seven trials or eight trials is much quicker on Microsoft Excel. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to say equals. Okay, whenever you're entering a formula, you always start with equals. Now we're going to go some brackets here because we want to go 6.6 .6 plus 7.1 divided by 2. We're going to say equals 6.6, .6, that's cell B2 you can see, plus 7.1, clicked on 7.1, it automatically filled in C2 for me, and the brackets, divide that by 2. That gives me the average time between 6.6 .6 and 7.1, 6.85 seconds. Now I'm going to highlight that box or that cell. Click in the bottom right hand corner until you see the plus. Scroll down, you're going to see now the average time for each of these. You see this formula that it automatically entered for this last cell, cell D7, is cell B7 plus C7 over 2. So it automatically changed the cells for me. Instead of punching this into my calculator six times, I punched into Excel once, and then I highlighted it down so that it would copy that formula for me. Now, I want to find the period. Okay, the period is, now it's going to be equal to the average time divided by 20. So it's going to be 6.85, or cell D2 that I just clicked on, divided by 20. One group made a mistake in the way they were counting. Sounds kind of odd that they had trouble counting to 20, but I understand how it happened, actually. Um, they only got 19. Okay, they basically started on 1. So then I got 19. That's not a big deal. What would you do here for the period? Instead of D2 divided by 20, it would be D2 divided by 19. As long as you specify up here in column B2, B, and C that it was the time for 19 revolutions instead of the time for 20 revolutions. Okay, so there's my period for the first one. Let's click on the bottom right-hand corner, highlight that down. There's my period for the rest of them. Now, finally, I want speed. The speed is 2 pi r divided by t. That's going to be 2 times pi, 3.14, times r, what's r? 0 0.1 meters, or this cell right there that I'm going to click on. It automatically fills in A2 for me. We divide that by the period, which is cell E2. Click on it. There's my speed for the first one. Scroll down. There's my speed for the rest of them. Make sense? Now I want to plot that graph of speed versus radius. Now how do I do that? I've already got the speed column highlighted, so let's keep that highlighted. Don't highlight the word, by the way. Highlight the numbers only. Then you're going to insert a scatter plot. Pick the very first option here. If you insert scatter plot, pick the first option. Graph looks something like this, but for whatever reason, it doesn't like putting the x-axis in properly the first time. So what we've got to do now is select our x data. We've already selected our y data from highlighting the y column. Okay, now I've got to select my X data. I'm going to do that by clicking on Select Data, click on Edit, click on Series X Values. Now I want to highlight the Radius column. That's my X values, right? Click that button again, click OK, click OK again. There's my graph. You can see that that graph, it's not a perfect straight line. That doesn't look like a linear relationship. Rather, it looks like it kind of curves, right? Looks like it kind of curves like this. Okay, what I'm going to do here now is format this a little bit nicer and then draw a trend line, not a line of best fit, not a straight line, but a curved trend line. 
So I'm going to click on that graph again. Now I'm going to click on chart layouts. Pick the first one because that's the one that will allow you to enter a chart title. Your chart title will be speed versus radius. Okay, my y-axis. Let's highlight my y-axis here. Type in speed. And that's going to be in meters per second. My x-axis, let's highlight that and change it to radius. That's going to be in meters. Okay, let's get rid of this because I just don't like seeing that there. It's not a big deal if you forget that. Okay, now let's highlight or click on one data point. Right-click, add trend line. Now, what do you think this looks like, a straight line? I don't think it looks like a straight line. Okay, it looks like there's a straight line drawn there right now. I don't think we want that. Can we pick something that we think it might look like? Exponential? Does it really look exponential? No, it doesn't. Not to me. Power? Does it look like it follows that trend better? I would say that it does. So that's the one that I'm going to pick there. Now I've got, now I've got not only my data table and my analysis table completed, I've got my graph completed as well, which I can just right-click, copy, paste into Microsoft Word or into Google Docs. Okay. And now I can also see the trend here. What's happening in this? As the radius goes up, the speed goes up, right? But which one increases faster? If the graph looks like this, let's uh, create a new page here because I can't write on there. If the graph looks like this, then as the radius goes up, the speed is going up. If the graph looks like this, as the radius goes up, the speed is going up. Which one's increasing faster in the first one? Which one's increasing faster, R or V? V. As R goes up, V goes up, but faster than R. In this one, as R goes up, V goes up, but slower than R. Does that make sense? If you take a look at the equation, you know it's right from the top, you knew it wasn't going to be a linear relationship, right? F is equal to mv squared over r. v squared over r. The relationship is r is related to v squared, or v squared is related to r. We knew it was going to either be this graph or this graph right off the top if we had a thought about it. Now, having said that, if you get data that doesn't produce a graph that looks like this, which is the way that it actually should, if you get data that doesn't look like this, don't fudge it. Okay, don't fake it. Don't say the relationship is, is what we're saying it is here right now just because that's what you know it should be. Say the relationship is whatever that is consistent with your data. Okay, if you get this, I don't think you will, but if you get this, then your relationship is, here, let's go with this one. As R increases, what happens to V? V decreases. That's not what you should get, but if you do, then you need to have state your conclusion that is consistent with that data in order to get marks for that. Does that make sense? Okay.